When you turn the machine on, it goes directly to straight stitch and mode one. Let's take a closer look at mode one. Mode one refers to your basic utility stitches, and they're displayed here on the front of the machine next to these direct selection buttons that have numbers on them. For example, if I want zigzag, I just press the button and I have a zigzag. If I want a multi-step zigzag, I would go directly to multi-step zigzag. But we're gonna sew the straight stitch. So I'm gonna press one for straight stitch and we can start sewing. I can see in my screen that my stitch length, which is controlled by these buttons here, is set at 2.5 millimeters. So let's sew a seam with the straight stitch at 2.5 millimeters and see what that looks like. This is your needle plate and it has seam allowance markings on it. The front is marked in metric measurement and the back is in imperial or fractions of an inch. A really common seam allowance for most projects and commercial patterns is 5 eighths of an inch. Let's sew a seam with the edge of our fabric following the 5 eighths inch seam guideline. Place the fabric under the presser foot with the raw edges lined up against that line. Lower the presser foot lifter and you can step on the foot control to start sewing. After sewing forward two or three stitches, you can press and hold the reverse button, and that will sew in reverse so that you lock the seam so it doesn't unravel as you continue working on your project. Step on the foot control to sew forward again. and then press and hold the reverse button again to sew in reverse once more two or three stitches. And then sew forward again to finish. Now you can use your thread cutter button to quickly and easily trim your thread tails. It cuts the top and bottom thread both at the same time, which is a great time saver. And there's our seam, we have our securing stitches at the beginning and end so that our seam won't come undone when we continue working on our project. You can use the stitch length control to shorten or lengthen the stitches that you sew in straight stitch mode all the way up to four and a half millimeters. Let's put this at about a four and sew the straight stitch and see what that looks like. I'm going to lower the presser foot lifter and step on the foot control to sew. So here you can see my original seam at two and a half millimeters, and here's my longer stitch length setting at four. So just set the stitch length the way you want for your project. You can also change the position of your needle in straight stitch, and to do that, you would use your width control button. Now, obviously there's no width on a straight stitch, but you can use the width control buttons to change the needle position in varying degrees from left to right. There's a reference for this on your screen. Because the maximum stitch width of the machine is seven millimeters, three and a half indicates center, which is where we are right now. If I keep pressing this button, you can see here in the screen that I can see the needle position moving over and all the way up to seven millimeters, which is far right needle position. If I press minus, I can bring it down I know what center is or default because it's got this box around the 3.5, but I can continue in varying degrees all the way over to zero, and that's far left needle position. Back to three and a half for center or default. Again, mode one is your basic utility stitches that are displayed just to the left of these direct selection buttons. Another really popular stitch is the zigzag, and it displays right here on the front of your machine next to the direct selection button marked with five. When I press it, I can see on my screen, I go directly to zigzag stitch, and it displays my default stitch width of five millimeters and the default stitch length of two millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. Press my thread cutter button to trim my threads. 
And here's our default stitch setting for our zigzag. If I wanted to, I could make those stitches wider using the width control, which is right here. I go all the way up to seven millimeters. Press the thread cutter again, cuts my top and bottom thread, and there's my stitch width at a wider setting. We could go the other direction and make it narrower. Let's try it at about a 2.0. Press the thread cutter. And here we have the same stitch, but with three different width settings. So here's an example of what we just sewed, five, seven, and two millimeters. And not only can you change the width of your stitch, but you can also adjust the stitch length. This is our 5.0 millimeter default that we just did. And here's where we, we, we adjusted the stitch length of the machine. And we brought the stitches really close together so you don't even see any fabric between the stitches. And you might do that for machine applique, for example. But here's the same stitch as our original stitch, but with the stitch length set at a much longer stitch length setting. And you might use this for decorative sewing. So just experiment with different stitch length, stitch width, and even different threads to get the look you want for your project. Your Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine has enhanced speed and piercing power. But you can set the speed control wherever you like depending on where you're comfortable for your project. You can sew slow, up to fast, or anywhere in between by using your speed control lever. Now I have it set on the slowest speed right now, so I'm going to step on the foot control to start sewing. And it doesn't matter how hard I step on the foot control, this sets the maximum sewing speed for me. So let's see how that works. And as I sew, I'll move it over to the right and show you fast speed, and then we'll come back down to slow speed again. So you can see how to control that with your speed control lever. I had maximum pressure on the foot control, but I controlled the speed with the speed control lever. I'm going to cut the thread with my thread cutter button. And now I'll show you that you can also unplug the foot control. So we're not going to use the foot control at all. You can manually control running the machine using the start stop button here at the front of the machine just above the reverse button. And again, you can use that speed control the same way we did with the foot control, bring it down low and press the button here to start sewing. So I'm controlling it completely manually. Press the cutter button so you can use it with the foot control or without. And this lever sets the maximum sewing speed whether you sew with or without the foot control. So now we're going to talk about this button right here. This button is my needle up down control. When I place my fabric under the presser foot and lower the presser foot, whenever I sew you'll see that the needle stops in its up position. So I stopped with my foot control. I'm going to step on the foot control again, and the needle will stop in the up position again. If I want it to go down, on demand, I can press this button, and it will stop in the down position. But when I sew again and stop, it will go back up in the up position. And the reason it does that is because it is programmed to stop in the up position. 
Over here, you'll see in my settings, I have another button that looks like the needle up down button, but this lets me program the position of the button. So when I press it now, you'll see that now the needle is programmed to always stop in the down position because of this little down arrow that shows on this graphic on the screen. So when I sew, the needle stops in down position. This is great for pivoting, like when you sew around appliques, around pockets, around quilt bindings. But every time I stop sewing, the needle will stop in down position because I programmed it to do so. If for any reason, right now, even though it's programmed to stop down, I want to just have the needle come up, maybe to remove my fabric from the machine, I can press my on-demand button to raise it up once. But if I continued sewing, it will continue to stop in the down position because it's programmed to stop in the down position. Having it programmed to stop in the down position is kind of like having a little placeholder so when you stop to pivot, the fabric will stay in place. So on demand, I can have it come up. Again, it will stop in the down position because it's programmed to stop down. If I turn that off, now it will stop in the up position when I stop sewing. So program it here to continuously stop in either the up or down as you prefer, and just touch it one time on demand to go up or down one time with this button here. This button here is called your tie-off button. And when you press that, it sews three securing stitches, whether you're gonna sew a straight stitch or a decorative stitch. And that means you could trim the thread once you're done sewing and your threads won't unravel. Right now I have a tulip stitch, one of your decorative stitches programmed in here. So when I sew, and press the tie off button, it will give me an immediate tie off. Now I didn't finish the tulip, as you can see, because I chose an immediate tie off and it stopped immediately where I told it to stop sewing. But maybe I want to sew a tulip and have the whole tulip sew and then have the machine stop at the end of the tulip and tie off. And to do that, I have a button over here in my settings, which is this one right here. And when I press that, I can see in my screen that it's activated. And what that will do is let me sew an entire tulip. And then I can choose tie off and it will know to sew the entire tulip and then stop and tie off. So let's try that. Now when I sew the tulip and my tie off settings button is activated, as I can see in my screen, I'll begin sewing the tulip and while the tulip is stitching, I'll press my tie off button and the machine will know to complete the tulip, tie off at the end of the tulip. And now I can trim my threads and they won't unravel. Your stitch elongation feature is available for your satin stitches. When you sew those, make sure you use your satin stitch foot that has that groove at the bottom so that the dense stitches can pass underneath freely. So now we're going to talk about this button right here, stitch elongation button. And how I know I have elongation is if I see this icon up here on my screen. This, me this times one means normal size. If I press it again, I see times two, I get my stitch twice as long, and it's still dense. I press it again, I see times three, press it again, times four, and press it again, I can go all the way up to times five. The difference between elongation and stitch length is if I just take my stitch and lengthen out the stitch length, the number of stitches remains the same within the stitch, they're just spread out over a wider area but I can see fabric through them, and maybe I want the stitch to be very dense, but long. That's when I would use elongation over stitch length. For many of the decorative stitches in your machine, there's a mirror image function available, and that lets you take stitches and flip them over from left to right. To demonstrate, we'll show you this stitch that looks like a little spool of thread. That's in mode two, and that is stitch number 128. So I'm gonna press the buttons one, two, eight in quick succession. 
I can see my spool, and at the bottom of the spool, it starts on the left-hand side and swirls around like this. And that's what we sewed here, just one right after the other. But if we want to flip the stitch from left to right, we're going to press the mirror image button, and I can see even on screen, the image of the stitch has changed. The thread is now coming off the spool from right to left, and we sewed one after another. And I know the mirror image is activated because I can see this icon in the screen. So for many of your decorative stitches, mirror imaging is a possibility for more creative options.